Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, long time no see. I don't even know why I've been away, I just, well for one, I didn't have a camera for a little bit. I got rid of my old Sony, I think it was the Sony Z1F or something. I didn't like it, the footage was blurry and it just, it was very annoying every time I uploaded because I'm like, I know this quality could be better. But I just invested in a new camera. This is the Canon G7X Mark III. I know it's not the best for video, and I know the microphone probably doesn't sound that good, but I will be investing in an external mic and eventually a better camera. Bear with me, just getting this thing back up and started. I miss you guys so much. I miss doing YouTube. YouTube was like the first thing I did when like dipping my toe into social media. I used to make um, makeup videos back in the day and I just miss it and I'm so happy to be back. Just got a Dunkin' coffee. I got a caramel oat milk latte. Um, I actually just left the gym. I hit chest and tries and I think my gym was holding an event or something because it was so busy and honestly it was very overwhelming so I only did a few exercises I didn't do cardio I was like I'm just gonna go um, grab a coffee and film this video because I really want to get this up for you guys as soon as possible so today's video is gonna be an Instagram q and A. I I asked you guys to send me some questions and I haven't really looked at them yet so this will be interesting I'll try to get to as many as I can but as you can see you guys sent lots of questions, so thank you guys for submitting these. Every time I put up a Q&A, I am always shocked that people actually send in questions. I don't know why I just think, like, nobody's going to care enough to send in a question. So thank you guys so much for that. Before I get into it, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kennedy. I am 26 years old, and I create fitness, wellness, lifestyle content. I recently went through a 45, about 45 pound weight loss journey, and I documented the whole thing. If you guys want to see more of that, you can check me out on Instagram and TikTok. I post a lot of like transformations. I post a lot of tips on there. I do want to make a YouTube video in depth about my weight loss journey just to answer any questions that you guys have. It's a lot easier to answer questions on YouTube than it is the shorter um, form content platforms. So yeah, that's a little bit about me and I do work a nine to five job as well. Content creation is not my main source of income. Um, I was thankful enough to get my first brand deal this year. So that's been really exciting and again thank you guys because I wouldn't get these opportunities without you so yeah that's just a little bit about me and let's go ahead and get into the Q&A how do you manage cravings okay this is something I really want to talk about because I have changed my mindset completely when it comes to food whenever I maybe wanted to lose weight in the past or I wanted to start eating clean my immediate thought was okay I need to cut out this I need to cut out this I need to cut out this like these foods are bad and these foods are good and one thing about me I have a sweet tooth I love sweets I always have my mom and sister are the same way we just we love sweets and I have found that including those things in my diet has really helped me adhere to it now, if you're trying to eat in a deficit, I would recommend going for maybe a lower calorie option. Like obviously, some of the time you can indulge and just have the real thing. But obviously, if you're trying to hold yourself accountable, if you're trying to lose weight and you just want something sweet, maybe instead of a brownie, which could be really calorie dense, either opt for a healthier version of that brownie or you can get like a halo top ice cream and you can eat the whole tub for probably less calories than just one of the brownies so it's almost like volume eating but you want to just make better choices and i think i've learned a lot about nutritional values in foods and that's just something i didn't know before because i would say before i started my weight loss journey i wasn't eating unhealthy but I was eating very calorie dense foods. So that was just like the biggest switch for me. And as soon as I realized that, I was like, oh, I can still enjoy myself just in moderation. So yeah, that was a very big switch for me. And when it comes to cravings, I usually honor them and I eat whatever I'm craving because if I don't, the craving will simply not go away. So I would rather just eat it and move on. So that's how I deal with cravings and I 
think it has helped my relationship with food so so much this latte is actually really good i don't think i've had a duncan hot latte before i usually get an ice latte but this is fire i'm just hoping it doesn't get too hot in my car because i really don't want to turn on the ac so if you guys see me start to sweat it's probably because I'm sitting in the car with no AC on. <laughs> if you feel comfortable, could you show your weight loss evolution per week with stats? So I have posted a lot of transformations on my other platforms, such as Instagram and TikTok. Um, so you can kind of see me transform over there. I have chosen to not share my weight because I don't want somebody that might be my starting weight to think that they need to lose weight or that that weight looks bad on them because honestly, we all carry weight differently. And I don't want anybody to just like compare themselves to me and be like, oh my gosh, like she lost this. She was this starting number and she looked like that and I must look like that and now I need to lose weight. You know, I just don't want that for my audience. And I know I have a lot of women following me and I just care about you guys so much. And I just, I want you to be on your own journey and do what feels right for you and maybe you feel great at the weight that i was when i started and that's okay too i'm 5'7 i'm a size 6'8 now started at about a size 14 16. um so those are the only stats that i can really share with you um but yeah i just choose to not share that scale number because it honestly it's not super important obviously it was a measurement of progress for me over my weight loss journey because I wanted the scale to go down that was my goal I just feel like that number is for me to know only and that's all it needs to be so yeah fun facts about you um oh I don't know <laughs> whenever I got this question in high school it would always give me anxiety because I, I really don't know I I work a lot um I spend time with my family a lot. Um, I'm not in a romantic relationship. I haven't been in a romantic relationship in like three years or something, but my last one was like five years. So I feel like I need a break, you know, like I'm good. Um, so yeah, no partner. Um, I'm an aunt. My sister has a baby boy and I love him so much. He just turned a year old in March. Um, so just like traveling and doing that type of stuff. Um, I love to be outdoors. I'm pretty introverted, honestly. So like the fact that I post videos on social media is like crazy, but I do feel like I can turn on my extrovertness when I need to. Um, trying to think of what else. I really don't know. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a super social person. Again, like I can be social when I need to, but a lot of the times... I'm just chilling like by myself or with my family. I'm also a dog mom. I have a dog named Cammy. She's a golden retriever and she just turned four in February. So yeah, she is the love of my life. I got her during the panorama or whatever. <laughs> I don't think I can say the actual word on YouTube, but I got her during that and she has so much anxiety. I also started working from home around then as well. So she's just used to me being around all the time. So it's understandable, but yeah, she is the love of my life. Love her so much. And I actually like really want to get a puppy in the next few years. So I'm hopeful that that will happen, but I'm just kind of like waiting until it feels like the right time because a puppy is a lot of work <laughs> do you do ab workouts okay so i am not consistent with my ab workouts i try to train core and do some sort of stability work i'm always bracing my core when i'm weight training so that definitely works those muscles um i was consistently doing abs for a little bit I don't know what happened, but I kind of fell off. So I'll probably start doing them again soon. But I, the more that I train core, abs, they're two different things kind of. Um, the more that I do like stability and core stuff, the more that I like it. So I just need to like get in the rhythm of it again. But it's definitely not something that I'm consistent with. <laughs> do you use a scale to measure your food? Um, yes, I do. I will say... The more I got into my weight loss journey and the more I was able to like eyeball things, the less I use my scale. So these days I'm not using it nearly as much as I was in the beginning. I was like measuring every little thing in the beginning and I will say it did help me in that stage of my journey. 
but moving forward like the goal is to really just have a healthier relationship with food and know more about portion sizes which i have learned so much so these days i don't really feel the need to weigh out every little thing because i kind of can eyeball it and i know exactly like what's in certain foods so it's just a part of the process i do think it helps to do it when you first start just so you can learn things but yeah other than that you don't need to be like super strict just like whatever works for you if you like to weigh out things if you like to know exactly what you're eating by the gram then do that and if you're somebody that kind of wants to wean off of using the scale as much then do that but i do um i do still log all my food in my fitness pal just to know what my intake is i'm still on my reverse diet so i just like to know that i'm hitting my calorie goal each day so yeah hopefully that helps i just cracked my sunroof because i'm getting a little overheated in here um so if you guys can hear like outside noises and cars and stuff then that's why so i'm sorry about that can you expand on what muscle building is like while on a cut so for me personally my goal on my cut was not to necessarily build more muscle i was focused on maintaining so i will say i don't have a lot of experience trying to build a whole mu whole bunch of muscle while on a cut um but i think a lot of the same things apply such as keeping your protein intake high making sure you get enough rest and recovery time you still want to be pushing yourself in the gym i think a lot of people they're not pushing themselves as hard as they should be while they're on a cut or maybe they feel like they can't and i will say during the last bit of my cut i felt a little bit weak i felt like i did a really good job of maintaining the strength that i built before i started so yeah i don't have a lot of experience in that but keeping your protein high should help getting enough rest focusing on progressive overload those are the three things that you really need to do whether you're trying to just maintain muscle or build new muscle while on a cut. How do you find the life balance slash what's your day to day? So I would say my life is very monotonous at the moment. I just feel like right now I'm in grind mode and I'm focused on pushing out content, picking up new hobbies, you know, doing things that I love on a day to day basis and just trying to stay present. Um, I think with social media, you know you can get really wrapped up in like numbers and stuff like that and i really try to not do that which is why i love to just like hang out with my family because they don't care about the number that's next to my name on a social media platform you know i think it's really important to just surround people that keep you grounded keep you level-headed but also remembering like hey i i really want to achieve this thing like content creation is something that i've always wanted to do it's something i always saw myself doing i would like create videos when I was younger on like the Microsoft Movie Maker and all that stuff like my mom will tell you I used to like make videos with my dogs like running in the backyard and like putting cute music and stuff it's just video editing is something I've always been drawn to it's something I've always done and I was like this has to be something this has to be like my calling of somewhat I think we all have like multiple things that we can do in life but this is definitely one of mine and I just absolutely love it. So yeah, right now, day to day is very monotonous. I'm just working content creation, making sure I eat, getting my workouts in, um, making sure I get outside and get fresh air. Just like the simple things right now is my priority and just, what was that? Oh my gosh, I thought that was a bug, it was a leaf. <laughs> um, yeah, just like the simple things and just being thankful for my health is um, another thing and just, <laughs> Oh my god. Is it a bug? <laughs> I swear a bug just like flew in here. I don't know where it went, but um I guess I'll keep the window cracked. I'm literally I don't like bugs. That's another fun fact about me. <laughs> I don't like bugs. Yeah, that's like my day to day as of now. What is your strength training routine? Okay. For the entirety of my fitness journey, it has been a four day split. That is what I started with. I was like, I can do four days. I can make it to the gym four days. I have three days of rest or to do like active rest or whatever it is. So my routine is I usually start the week off with back and biceps. And then I have a glute and hams day, chest and tries, and glutes and quads it depends on that week 
but four days I can work with and I can move it around usually however I need to. So I don't stick to like Sunday is this and Monday is this and two, like I don't do that. I move my schedule around to whatever works for me that week and that's what's most sustainable for me. And usually after I'm done lifting weights, I'll get on the treadmill and do like 30 or 40 minutes of cardio. Um, lately it's been really nice outside so I've just been walking outside at the park. Um, so yeah, whatever works for you, but that is my routine currently. The next question is still related to my strength training routine. It says, how long are your strength training workouts usually? So for me, I'm filming a lot of the time, which tacks on like sometimes like an hour to my workouts, depending on how much I'm filming and what I'm filming. So without the filming part, I would say... I'm in and out of there usually within an hour, hour and a half. I am not at the gym all day by any means. Um, also depends on if I do cardio or not, but usually my lifting doesn't take me that long. I like to be in and out. I like it to be quick, concise, and efficient. So you don't need a long workout. You don't need a bunch of exercises to make progress. Um, you just need to be intentionally training and training with intensity. So yeah. Can you explain the difference between a calorie deficit and reverse dieting? Okay, so a calorie deficit, you're eating less than your body burns at rest on a daily basis. I use the TDE calculator online to get this. Um, it gives you your maintenance calories, your cutting calories, which would be your deficit, and your bulking calories, which would be your surplus. So you're just gonna follow that cutting number. I use my fitness pal, but I don't use the number that my fitness pal gives me because they will give you a deficit number. I find that number to be too low. So I use the TDE calculator. I plug that number into my fitness pal and that's how I go about tracking things. The reverse diet is done after a period of being in a deficit you don't have to do a reverse diet if you don't want to there's no problem with jumping back into maintenance calories but i just prefer to do a reverse because i just want my body and mind to catch up to like what i'm doing and my new intake and all that stuff so i'm just going about it is that a bug oh my gosh so i'm just going about it the gradual way so with a reverse diet you're gradually increasing your calories. You're incrementing them up each week until you're back up at maintenance calories. And maintenance calories is gonna help you maintain the current weight that you're at. So you're increasing your food each week until you're back up at that maintenance level. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it is all confusing and I feel like I've been researching this stuff for years so I have a pretty good grasp on it, but I hope that kind of helps. As always, my DMs are open if you guys have questions. I get a lot of questions about, can I share my calorie deficit number, my calorie intake? I do not share this. This is something else that I am just not comfortable sharing because it's based on so many things. It's based on your height, your weight, your, your job, whether you're sedentary or not. So for me to give you guys my number, it's not going to help in your journey if you feel like the number that you know it spit out is too low or too high you can always like play around with it maybe start in a smaller deficit and then increase it and like see how you feel on that um you can definitely play around with it you don't have to automatically jump into like a 400 or 500 calorie deficit from your maintenance like you don't have to do it that way um see what works for you and your lifestyle and see what gives you the results that you're looking for sometimes it's just about trial and error i feel like i got really lucky in the sense where the number that i went with and the number that it gave me ended up working for me um but we all have different lifestyles different jobs so just keep that in mind that is another reason why i just i don't share those things because i don't want anybody to just like copy and paste my number because it's based on my body and like my stats so it's not going to help you um i just recommend you know maybe using that number as like a guide and then adjusting it as needed so yeah somebody said weekly vlogs question mark um i don't know i know i did that last summer and i will say it is a lot and i also feel like my life i know a lot of people say this but i just don't feel like my life is that interesting to do weekly vlogs i don't want to bore you guys if you want to see the monotonous day-to-day -day of my life i might do that but also my job 
is a little bit stressful sometimes so trying to like vlog on top of working a nine to five is a lot of work but i think if i ever do content creation full time which i would love to speaking that into the universe um i would definitely do weekly vlogs i think that would be so fun and just like take you guys around my life and stuff but as of now i'm not going to commit to any sort of schedule with youtube i'm just going to like pop in here and there and um make videos when it feels true to me so that's my plan with youtube but maybe in the future we will have weekly vlogs back <laughs> how has your fitness journey impacted your mental health um i would say it has helped my mental health tremendously like before i started going to the gym consistently i had crippling anxiety i still do sometimes don't get me wrong but i just think it's given me so much mental clarity i feel like the depression that I had prior to the gym has pretty much dissipated. I would say I struggle a lot more with anxiety than depression these days, but depression used to like take over my life pretty much and I would just like sleep all day and just, I just wasn't happy. And now I feel happy, but I also feel like being happy comes with a lot of anxiety because you don't want that to be taken away. So yeah, I struggle more with anxiety, but I do think the gym just, it keeps me grounded. It gets me into my body and out of my mind. So I would say it's just a natural medicine and it makes me really happy. So I'm really happy that I found the gym. And there are times where I feel like I've fallen out of love with it, but I think that's just a part of anything that you do consistently you're not always going to be super ecstatic about it um but i think it's something i'll always do regardless just because it's very ingrained into my routine it's ingrained into my brain like when i don't move for a few days i'm like i need to get up and do some movement today so it's just something that it's just a habit honestly it's a habit so yeah i love it and i think it's impact my mental health overall in a positive way what helps you the most with consistency Whew, consistency is so important in life and your fitness journey and everything and I would say the most important thing to me when it comes to consistency is realizing that consistency does not equal perfection okay I have eaten off plan I've eaten things that probably put me over my calorie goal sometimes I was not perfect on my journey and I try to be as honest as I can about that because it's really not about being perfect. I think people see like my transformation and they're like, oh my gosh, like how did you not eat blah 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 for nine months? And it's like, no, like I've been <laughs> I've been eating stuff, especially like during the holidays, like there's all these delicious treats. Like my mom loves to bake things during like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I didn't want to miss out on those things. I think life is too short to miss out on the things that you love. So I was eating those things and during the holidays, I focused more on maintaining, you know, I wasn't stressing about, oh my gosh, I need to like hit this number and blah, blah, blah. Cause I was spending time with family and that time is priceless. And I think the biggest thing also is that there is no rush. Okay. If you go on a vacation for a week or whatever it is, just tell yourself like, I'm going to get back on the program when I get back home and I'm going to enjoy myself while I'm here and I'm going to be present you know I think we can really take ourselves out of the moment worrying about what we look like or food or whatever it is and I'm just not doing that anymore I, I didn't do that during my whole journey and I'm so proud of myself for it because those thoughts used to absolutely consume my life and I'm just so proud of the progress that I've made with that you don't have to be perfect just majority of the time adhere to your routine adhere to that routine that you've set for yourself of moving your body and eating clean foods and if you're trying to lose weight eating in a calorie deficit you know adhere to it as much as you possibly can but do not let it consume you that is my best advice okay my camera just shut off um so i'm just gonna do a few more questions because i think it's about to overheat because like sitting in the sun right now you guys are asking about my favorite clothing brands as far as like gym clothes and stuff i love gymshark i'm wearing them right now i love honor active that's like my dream brand to work with um also love patula active for like lifestyle pieces i would say are those my top three those are my top three um i'm really looking forward to trying buff bunny they actually reached out and wanted to send me some pieces so i'm very excited to try them out as well um i'm trying to think 
I think that's the only ones that I can think of right now. Obviously, there's like Nike and Adidas and like all those as well. But for the gym, I would say I'm usually wearing Gymshark or Honor Active. It's probably going to be the last one that I do. I will do a part two if you guys want. Um, but it says, have you ever been on birth control and what side effects have you experienced? So I was on the pill. I don't remember the name of it, but I was only on it for like a year. I don't like it. I don't like pill hormonal birth control. It is not for me. I think I was on one that was a very low estrogen dose, if I'm remembering correctly. It was either estrogen or progesterone or whatever. I don't like it. <laughs> it makes me feel not great. Um, it makes me just not feel like myself. So I now have the aura ring and I track my cycle with natural cycles. So that is like my birth control form i guess um i'm also like not in a relationship or anything like that so it, that that definitely helps the situation um but yeah i don't like it my body just doesn't react well to it before the last pill that i was on i believe i tried a few others but i just didn't stick with them because i didn't like the way that they made me feel um i felt really crappy and just like unlike myself on them so yeah not for me not for me and i refuse to get an iud put in i just i think i would simply pass out <laughs> so um yeah that's my experience with birth control yeah thank you guys so much for watching today's video again i'm just so excited to be back on youtube and i hope this q a was helpful informative maybe you learned something about me um thank you guys for your support as always and i will see you guys in the next one bye